Good day. So here we are. This is the stator wound with 18 poles, <clears throat> completing virtual rotation. Virtually rotating as smooth as I got it so far. Yeah, it's being powered by the stereo amplifier. I have two 8 ohm resistors on each channel because the coil ohm, the resistance in the coil is too low for my amplifier. So these are burning away. They're hot. But that gets my current where I want it for my tests. So we got a rotating magnetic field inside of a pipe. The pipe is wrapped with something like 220 or something like that. Really thin wire. Okay, So it's like a Newman style. Just because that's what I had to test with that was already built. Okay, so we got a rotating magnetic field inside of a coil. Okay, I'm powering this sucker at 90 hertz. Okay, here is my output form. As you see, you see the jaggedness in the waves from the different poles. But the form of the sine wave is pretty nice. It's not bad. Now look at the frequency. 90 Hertz 90 Hertz okay so we know it's all configured correctly and I know it's rotating because no matter how I orient this when I turn it <clears throat> we stay the same sine waves and the induction stay the same however we orient this coil inside the pipe <clears throat> so the virtual rotation is happening within that now here's the key part which we need to figure out how to capitalize on. Okay, this is measuring input current and the power supply is locked with the voltage. Okay, this is the current coming in. These leads here are the output coils of this. Okay, that. So when I short these, when I take power, we want to see what happens to the input. Normally in a transformer, the input goes up to match the amount of wattage that we're taking out of this system. In this situation, we're going to short one, two, three, 661, 662. We're shorted. Now we're going to unshort, unshort, 663. Now, essentially, if the back EMF was perfectly balanced, it shouldn't move. It should be 663 shorted and it should be 663 open. So we're not a hundred percent balanced but we're pretty damn close and it's leaning in our favor a little bit because it actually goes down a hair. Okay so that is key so the object is to create a positive feedback loop where the output voltage is high enough that it could feed back into the circuit. And if the amperage does not go up when you're taking that power to feed it back in, you're taking some of this, which is only a little bit. It doesn't really matter how much, but it puts it into the input. So the input raises a little bit which raises the output a little more which raises the input a little more and it creates a positive feedback loop in theory I mean that's the aim here to create a situation where the input amperage does not go up when you draw a load instead ours is going down a little bit which is good and then this gives us some power to put back in which increases the amount of magnetic field the stator makes which thus gives us more energy out and again that energy keeps looping through the system hence it's called a positive feedback loop now I don't know if this will do it I don't know if I'll even ever accomplish it but that's the goal here is to create virtual rotation 
because that's how a car alternator could sustain its magnetic field. It creates a, uh, a positive feedback loop that can sustain itself. And all the counter resistance gets placed against the engine that's turning the rotor. But in this case, there's no engine turning it because we have a virtual rotating rotor that doesn't have to physically move. So therefore, there's no load on the engine. And the goal is to figure out the correct configuration we need to do with the coils, with the driver unit, with the rotation, how to make it rotate in a way where it creates a positive feedback loop and it could sustain its own magnetic field. So that is what we're working on and that is the progress. 665 short, 664 input definitely does not go up. So, great.